So good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Um, good evening, depending on where you are. And welcome to this session. Um, we are looking at the postgrad diploma in digital business, um, one of the most successful courses we run here at Emeritus. This one in collaboration with the MIT Management uh, Exec Education and Columbia Business School. So welcome. I'd like to uh, start by just asking you, as is the way with these um, webinars, to please keep your microphone on mute so we don't have any uh, audio feedback issues. Um, and we will be taking questions as we go through, so please use the chat. Uh, I'll be taking a break uh, halfway through this program, and we have a, a, a section at the end for Q&A for more um, in in depth questions. But if anything crops up as we go through, please uh, add your comments into the chat and we'll take the most uh, critical ones as we go through and then have the Q&A at the end. And make sure that you are um, addressing your questions to all panelists and attendees so we can all see those and share those um, around the group. Um, we will be um, wanting to keep this interactive. So this is not just a one way, this is a great chance for you to ask your questions as you have them uh, in, uh, in advance of signing up for this program, which of course we hope you will be doing. So I'd like to start by uh, giving you a, um, an introduction to how we're gonna run this program. So we'll first of all look at the faculty and who the key leaders are, um, who are going to be sharing their expertise and their learnings with us. We're going to talk a little bit about Emeritus, about the business, what we do, where we come from, um, and about the way that we deliver learning to the uh, tens of thousands of people that we are um, educating on an annual basis. We then look at um, previous participants on this program. We look at the faculty themselves and the course leaders who will be um, uh, your navigators on the way through the program. We'll look at the overview of this course and some of the modules and the webinars that comprise the overall nine month program. A little bit about the learning platform that we use. Uh, and then finally, some of the logistics issues around fee and application deadline and all of that before we get to the Q&A section. So I'm gonna run through this pretty swiftly I want to make sure we do have enough time for your questions as we go through. So, um, quick introduction, who am I and what am I doing on this uh, session? So, I have been working with Emeritus now for four years. I'm a course leader on a number of the programs that we run uh, and my expertise is around digital transformation, e-commerce, uh, user experience and mobile. I've written three best practice books on mobile, which of course is very much at the heart of uh, all digital transformation these days. Um, my business, Burn the Sky, helps organizations to develop strategy, refine user journeys and experiences, digital experiences, uh, and increase sales. Um, it's about being efficient, but also keeping very agile in terms of how you develop your business and bringing those uh, skills into our consultancy. Uh, and then on the, um, the delivery side, in normal days, I spend most of my time traveling, of course, in the lockdown period. Uh, I'm based uh, in our, our head office here in the UK um, and working ordinarily face-to-face, -face, but now online with our client base across Europe um, the Middle East, Asia Pacific, and our focus is really around financial services, so American Express, HSBC, um, CVC Capital Partners. We also work extensively in the retail sector, uh, clients like um, John Lewis, uh, FMCG, we work with L'Oreal and Nestle, and then Telco and utility and consultancy clients. Um, and you also, as you can see from your slide, we work with a number of agencies to help them with their servicing for their clients uh, around all aspects of digital transformation. 
Emeritus is an unusual but a very fast growing and very successful organization set up by uh, alumni from Harvard and from INSEAD, uh, whose vision it was to create uh, extended learning programs for the great business schools around the world and provide those in an online format to the many hundreds of thousands of people who will not be actually going to uh, Harvard, INSEAD, MIT, Columbia, um, but wanting to access the quality and the caliber of their learning. So uh, we work with the best universities around the world. I've given you some US and uh, European examples, but of course there are other universities uh, in, in India, across APAC, in LATAM, we work with them. And then we're serving um, students across the world. You can see uh, 50,000, the number changes all the time, but it's a, truly a global uh, business model which has proven to be uh, very successful. And the result, uh, I think, is, is quite clear. For a lot of courses, uh, enrollment levels are high, but completion levels are fairly low because the content isn't good, it's not engaging, it's not real time. Our completion rates are phenomenal, 85% completion. So why is that? I think the magic formula here is a combination of live experience, live, live webinars, grading and graded uh, work that you'll be doing during the program and simulations, and then making sure that we have a follow-up plan to ensure that you really are keeping up to speed with the learning program and also assisting you should you need any assistance as you go through. So the content from the academic institutions and they're the best in the world. The guest lecturers, hands-on practitioners who live and breathe digital. We break it down into bite-sized learning, understanding as we do that you're busy execs and we need to create a program which works around your lives rather than you needing to take time out. Peer-to-peer -peer learning, this is absolutely fundamental and I find to be as a course leader right now on the one of the digital disruption programs we do with Cambridge uh, University uh, Judge Business School, the, one of the most valuable learnings is how we can be learning together and then providing feedback to one another in the development of the programs. That's absolutely fundamental in this course. We'll be looking at the capstone a little bit later. Simulations, real world applications, uh, mobile uh, and a mobile way of learning. Of course, so many of us are multitasking and our mobile is with us all the time and then the grading and evaluation. So this has proven to be very successful. And we built over the time uh, a very vibrant um, uh, network of alumni. So uh, people who have been through our programs, who keep in contact in order to get access to uh, the, the tutors and the course leaders, connect with an ever-growing network of professionals coming through our programs, uh, attend various events that we run face-to-face -face and of course online right now, um, to provide assistance and funding for startups, uh, to extend the program to larger numbers of uh, learners, uh, in various capacities and the platform model is, is very, very effective in getting us access to wider audiences and of course uh, becoming part of the emeritus groups that form uh, alongside each of the programs that we're running. So I'd like to now jump into the diploma itself and give you some introduction around what you can expect and what you can be learning on this program. So we are combining a number of different um, uh, modules here and giving a, a post-grad uh, experience around um, digital business strategy. Typically on a weekly basis, we'll be looking at four to six hours of your time uh, and providing this in the form of live webinars, videos, graded assignments, and covering um, the essential components of building and managing a digital business. The way the nine month split, we start with six months, which cover the three core modules, digital strategies for business, digital transformation, uh, platform strategy, and digital marketing strategy. And then 
three months that follow are the capstone project where you'll be working in teams to put the learnings into practice. So that's the, that's the backbone of our program here. Uh, I've covered a number of these points already, but in terms of the language we use, um, we are developing a model here based on a small private online course rather than a MOOC uh, program. And this has been very successful in keeping that completion uh, rate as high as possible. And I think the, the core to this is that by giving you a clearly structured program, uh, we are allowing students to manage their time efficiently around other work commitments, but also work collaboratively on the same program at the same time, which allows them to be um, scheduling their learning uh, alongside others and interacting with course leaders at specific moments as the program evolves also giving them access to personalized learning resources, which are fundamental rather than just saying, hey, here's a textbook, go and read the textbook. So we've got a clearly defined program with timeline, which allows you to work at your pace that fit your daily and weekly activities, but on a program alongside other learners, so you can be learning with them with the support of the faculty. So there are a lot of different components, as you would expect across nine months. We've got over 300 video lectures. We've got 29 assignments. We've got case studies that we will be using to anchor our learnings. Discussion threads and discussion boards, a very effective way using the platform to develop your ideas, but also to get feedback from other students. Uh, and, and this is a very important part of the peer-to-peer -peer learning live simulations to replicate what goes on in the real world, the big three month capstone project and online teaching sessions. All of this delivered with um, access to faculty and live Q and A's with Professor David Rogers. I'll come on to David in a moment. Um, and uh, so this provides the uh, assistance as you go through the program rather than being left to fend for yourself. So the key players, and you'll see both in person, uh, I'll do a quick intro now. So, so David Rogers is faculty at Columbia Business School. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working alongside David in the online environment, but also face-to-face -face, uh, delivering a, um, a program for, for, for clients on the face-to-face uh, the -face part of our business here. You can see a very rich um, um, combination of clients he's worked with there globally. Uh, and he's also been prolific as an author, writing the uh, Digital Transformation Playbook, and the network is your customer to fundamental texts which uh, underpin the the learning programs themselves um, we have also jeff parker jeff parker is the vis visiting scholar and uh, research fellow at the mit um, he jeff is a, um, a, a key thought leader in the area of platform business and platform strategy uh, a frequent speaker at various conferences around the world and has also written a book, not surprisingly, Platform Revolution, which is the, fund the core text that underpins uh, the, the platforms part of the program, which is the um, second of the three modules. So what are the key learnings? Well, it, it's often rather difficult to distill such a massive topic as, as, as digital marketing into a framework because there are many different ways to look at this. But the, the way we approach this is to build this on the back of a, a key, key framework, which um, David Rogers has developed around customer networks. And effectively, there are five key components to this. The first one is access. We need to access and audience, of course, the customer is, is fundamental to everything we do now. We need to be more customer centric rather than product centric. So we develop, start off with a, a, a solid understanding of who is the customer and how do we access that customer. Once we've identified who they are and how we access them, we need to engage them. We need to engage them with highly relevant personalized content 
which is easy for them to understand and to resonate with. I mean, the way to connect with people these days, it's not so much about uh, hitting them with a large number of messages and selling to them in the way that we did in the old days. Today, it's much more about educating them. It's about providing content which is genuinely relevant and timely and delivered at the right time in the right customer journey. So creating engaging content is more likely to be successful and we look at that key aspect there. Of course, every customer is different, so we need to think about customization. How can we make our product or service as relevant as possible by taking in some information about the customer and where the customer is and building them into a much more customer-centric um, proposition? True for B2C, but also B2B, of course, and B2B, which typically has longer timelines in terms of decision making and more decision makers at that. So we need to think about that customization for a larger number of uh, decision makers and influencers. Connect. We need to be using their networks in order to connect virally and build on the, the power of amplifying the right message about the product or service using their networks rather than having to do all that work ourselves. This is very authentic. In other words, it's provided with the input from the customer rather than us selling it, and also hugely cost-effective because we don't need to be buying media if we can be using earned media from our customers. And finally, collaborate. Collaboration is a fundamental principle of digital and digital transformation. So working with asymmetrical partners across various uh, aspects of our business as it grows, and then allowing their network to become enmeshed with our network, which in turn increases our reach and increases the power of our, our delivery platform. And this is a core part of um, Jeff Parker's uh, piece. So I'm not going to go through this in great detail because we don't, we don't have time on this session to do it, but I'm just going to pick out a few points here from this slide. Um, the process to design a digital strategy and implement it requires uh, an understanding of both the principles themselves and the practical application of those principles. So our model here gives you a very clear framework upon which to build your business strategy. And then the agile principles of uh, business development and implementation allow us to be measuring at all points interaction with customer or interaction from customer and then optimize what we're doing in a very iterative way. And this iterative prototyping concept is a fundamental principle of all effective digital communication and digital marketing. We look at different value templates to understand how we can capture data and then assess both structured and unstructured data sets and build those into business decision-making principles and empower teams to be making decisions based on data rather than based on instinct, which is where for a lot of businesses they have come from. The platform model allows us to rapidly build scale and value by bringing in different platform partners. And the sum of the parts is significantly greater than looking at uh, each individual component in isolation. Of course, there are big economies and big competitive advantages at play using platform uh, thinking and the development of, of platform, you know, whether you're looking at Amazon, you're looking at Google, we'll look at some examples in a moment. A platform uh, and proposition roadmap allows us to fundamentally challenge the way that we are doing business and reinvent our business model to take advantages of the dynamics that we're discussing here. We look also at the importance of extracting value from our own teams, introducing design thinking and the principles here, which encourage people to think expansively and develop a number of what if possibilities and then drive those through a very rigorous process of convergent thinking 
decision making to select the most powerful ideas which use the right technology, which are feasible to deliver and are genuinely going to give us some differentiation. So we look extensively at innovation here and then look at disruption, disruptive business models. How can we disrupt our business before someone else disrupts the business for us? And we think extensively here about disruption. And of course, we're living in the teeth of the biggest disruption any of us have ever come across with this COVID situation. How can we disrupt now and come out at the other end of this disruption in a stronger position than our competitors by looking at the dynamics at play and how we can harness the principles in this program um, to our competitive advantage? So there are many different ways that we reference the real world and real world examples in order to explain clearly how this works in the real world for your business. And you can see for each one of the models that we're developing here, uh, the business strategy, the digital strategies piece, the, um, the digital platform business, the digital marketing uh, opportunities. For each one of these, we've got explicit examples of businesses and we've done a detailed analysis of each and every one of these in order to identify what are the key strategic decisions that the business has had to tackle and what path have they taken in order to compete effectively and come out stronger than those that maybe have not thought this through thoroughly or have not aligned all of their stakeholders. And I'll just give you a, a couple of examples here. So, so the top one, Walmart, classic example of a bricks and mortar retailer, severely challenged by Amazon and other online businesses. So how has Walmart gone about developing its in-store experience, customer experience, and develop a highly successful native app, which allows the customer to engage with digital content, to reference other material created by Walmart customers, for example, uh, Walmart partners, in order to provide an immersive retail experience, which increases average order value and frequency of purchase. Um, let's look at Apple. Apple, of course, is, is one of the world's most successful brands. What's Apple done by bringing together the hardware and the software in a single operating system and interface? Apple's created a, an extremely powerful brand and the brand itself and the ecosystem which has built around this brand and this clear proposition has proven to be immensely successful. It's not just a case of buying great products. It's also a very smart payment uh, platform, Apple Pay now, which allows Apple to muscle into financial services, for example. We've seen how in the example of entertainment, Netflix has displaced and taken huge share away from a number of the, the traditional content players by building a customer first rather than a content first uh, business where the sourcing and then the, the promotion of the, the content is highly, very clearly linked to the user. And then the price proposition has proven to be affordable enough to, to gain huge audience, particularly during this COVID period, uh, and then drive significant value to uh, the brand. We've seen just moving down here, SAP, an interesting example of a platform ecosystem. And we look in detail at the SAP model what are the challenges for SAP in terms of either building their own capability or acquiring a partner and bringing the partner into a broader ecosystem that can serve other SAP customers on the platform? And then looking at digital marketing strategy, really interesting example. One of the, I, I lead this program and one of the streams I run is, is linked to the brand Coca-Cola. Uh, fascinating. In fact, I saw uh, the, the, sourcing of this data, this stat here, how Coca-Cola Australia saw a 7% increase in sales by creating personalized experiences around the brand. Personalization is so fundamental and by allowing the customers to effectively be part of the story and development of the Coca-Cola story, Coke has reduced cost 
and also built huge uh, connection and engagement with its customers by allowing them to create their version of the Coca-Cola experience. So we focus very hard on um, the experiences through brands like this, and that's a core part of our learning here. The capstone assignment is the bit towards the end of the program where we bring all these principles together and we have teams of typically five people working together and they could be based on those teams based on geography or based on the industry that they're working in coming together in order to develop a principle or rather look at a business challenge and work together to develop a solution to a real world challenge using the principles and tools that we look at in the program, develop the strategy, plan the execution, identify the metrics in order to measure and then optimize what they're doing and build out a, an, an execution plan. Now, having run the, uh, this program as a course leader a number of times, what I found is that the teams who plan their responses carefully and where they've got some personal experience of the challenge itself, they're going to be much more immersed in the development of the solution. And I've seen on a number of occasions, team members get together after the program and then develop ideas in partnership with one another uh, based on the experiences they've had and the shared learning that they've developed in those teams. So an extremely powerful way of overcoming what for a lot of online learning businesses is a problem, which is people go on a course, they read the books, they listen to the videos and whatnot, and then they go back to work. And it's, it's almost like a parallel universe. By focusing so hard on bringing this into, into practice, uh, and looking at practical ways to apply the learnings, this has proven to be an immensely successful way of turning these learnings into a way of progressing your career or getting that promotion or indeed coming up with ideas to, to, to develop a new business enterprise, which you would not have been able to do otherwise had you just gone on a, a sort of more um, one-way learning experience without that practical dimension. So the grading is essential. You know, if you're going to come out of this program with a certificate, you really need to earn it. And the important point here is that we set in practice a series of steps here where we will be grading you throughout the nine month period using a GPA or grade point average that runs from zero to 10. And we average out the scores that you get throughout the whole program. This comprises the three uh, modules, the um, digital strategies for business, the platform strategy, and then the DMS, the digital marketing strategy, and also includes the capstone assignment itself. Now to pass, you need to get uh, a GPA, an average of 4.67, but for the capstone component, you will need five out of 10, in other words, 50% to uh, attain that certification at the end of the nine month period. So why would you go on this course? Well, I hope in this very short intro, I've given you reasons to think that there's real value uh, for the uh, organization in you going through this program um, for the organization. It's a great way if I'm sponsoring my team on this program, I'm more likely to retain them as staff. I'm more likely to see an immediate ROI. You know, we should be thinking about executive education being an investment rather than a cost. If I'm investing in my team's learnings, then based on the practical nature of this course, we can then see that translate into productivity. Um, I'm wanting to make sure that the skills they get are not based on some dusty old business case written in the 1990s, but actually it's bang up to date with live examples and um, highly relevant uh, tools and skills as they're being developed right now. And also 
to use this as a great way of spotting the bright talent and the people with real ambition who are next the, the, the future leaders of my organization and then as an employee well i learn from the best so that makes a lot of sense i have the ability to learn while i'm i'm doing my business and so i don't have to put my to get, take a sabbatical take time out i can be doing this as i go through I accelerate my career while i'm doing my diploma at the same time focus on real world examples i run a a WhatsApp group on a number of the courses I run, and they, they these are these are really hot with uh, ideas, articles, videos, recommendations. So it's a great way of keeping this very much real world. And of course, we can also sign up to the Emeritus Network, which is very vibrant. So this is a very powerful way of uh, bringing in. Our, our learners and is a clear win-win both for the sponsor or the company and indeed for the employee. So who have we got registered already? Well we've got a, a very healthy number of people coming through this program every time it runs and it's a, you know, it's a nine month program so we're not starting the new program every month but we do have a number of these programs running uh, simultaneously and the past profile the past participants profile we've got over 50 countries represented we've got over 20 industries and you can see for yourself financial services that's a an area where I spend a lot of my time working as a consultant where there are some big transformation challenges from the fintechs, from the big, uh, the big uh, digital disruptors coming in. Um, IT services, a lot of consultants of course, they need to be great at consultancy. This is a good place to source great information and great case studies from the faculty. Healthcare, telecom and many others. And we have on average um, 35 years of age, so these are people typically, you know, they've already started families, they're very, very busy execs juggling various things, and also with significant amounts of work experience. So these are people who really understand the world of work and then how to bring in these new ideas to be more productive and effective themselves as managers or to make sure they're lined up for those, those big jobs when they come up a little later in their career. And here are some of the participants. You can see a broad range of businesses here, you know, from the, the global, um, uh, the global um, leaders in all sorts of sectors. So we're looking at uh, Unilever and PepsiCo and Nestle on, on the FMCG side, consumer packaged goods. We're looking at some of the big retail players. You can see Tesco's there. Um, you're looking at some of the telcos, uh, another big sector that uh, we're very heavily involved in. Um, the likes of, I'm seeing Turkcell here. Um, we've had, uh, you've yeah, got Nokia here. Um, looking at other examples in the consulting area. So uh, Tata, Accenture, and then um, what else have we got here? What else have we got here? Standard Bank, a number of financial services. Uh, firms also, Citibank. So a broad range uh, of sectors and alumni who've been through the program already. And I think just take, you know, it'd be worth just going on the website, checking out some of the testimonials for yourself, <clears throat> because this is a very powerful indicator as to whether this is a worthwhile use of your money and your time or your employer's money and your time. So who are we looking for? In fact, maybe we should just take a little break here because I can see there's quite a few questions here. Uh, I'll then finish up on the course, uh, the, the program here, and then we'll have a Q&A. So perhaps, um, Abishai, have we got any specific questions that jump out for you? Um, and if so, do you want to call those? I'll have a look through the thread as well in the chat. Um, and then we'll continue. We'll spend three or four minutes on this now and then we'll continue. So, so the question, uh, the university in India, I believe that's IIMK, but please, um, Abishai, if you want to jump in and answer that one. Uh, Institute, yes, yeah, sorry, there is a question there from Program Support. Thanks for that already. Uh, XLRI and the IAMK, as I mentioned, and IIT in Bombay. Uh, Maurizio 
criteria for uh, selecting the groups for the capstone. Uh, Maurizio, there's no, there's no one way that needs to be done. I mean, having gone through the program for six, the first six months, you will have got to know some of the other learners and you'll be maybe already talking to them about some, some business ideas that are relevant to your sector. But yeah, time zone's a good way to do it. There'll be a lot of time required in those three months uh, when you need to find a convenient time to be working on the assignment project. And so I'd suggest time zone is a good way to do it. But it may be based on um, your own personal experiences or, or aspirations or maybe sector expertise. Um, so Alex here, how will you describe the relevancy of the diploma to a supply chain practitioner? Um, I, I mean, I would say in terms of Alex, in terms of the platform business, it's, it's super critical that we understand who the other platform partners are and we understand what their digital strategy is and how we can best meet their delivery uh, targets and their, their broader strategic objectives uh, and, and mirror that in our business. Um, th there will be many issues here around their product development roadmap, their service standards and service ambitions, which need to feed into your uh, business because as the platform business requires a very strong interface in real time, not just in terms of the product itself, but think about the data, how you can be sourcing and then analyzing data to extract insights around demand, around some of the issues to do with logistics. Um, this requires a very, very close meshing of your two business models. So I think in terms of upstream and downstream, you're going to find real value, particularly, as I say, in the platform area, but also more broadly, just a better understanding of the customer and of how to engage the customer. If you know what your end customer is doing, then everyone in the supply chain should be aligned to start with the customer and then build that into their business model. So if I may, I'm going to come back to a few more questions in a moment. Uh, Abishai, if there's anything specifically you want to call out, then let me know. Otherwise, I'll just finish up on the slides and then we'll have a Q&A and get you guys talking uh, at the end, if that's OK. Um, yeah, so I'm going to head back. Yeah, I'll go ahead and we'll come back to the Q&A uh, in, in a moment. So. What are we looking for? Well, we understand that as adults, um, adults learn in rather different ways to uh, children in, in school. The, the principle of action learning, which is where we want to give you the tools and the information in order to apply those to your business challenges and to solve the problems, this is the best way to develop executive education in, in my experience. So what we're looking for from our learners is not people who just want to be spoon fed with the answer. What we do want is people who are going to be looking for the solutions and looking beyond the defined scope of work of their job and beyond the actual curriculum. But more it's about a way of thinking about solving problems and doing so collaboratively. We want people also who are not just blue sky thinkers who sit there and come up with strategy, but people who actually get stuff done. People who are, uh, who are tasked with and fascinated by the whole beginning to end solution and how to make sure that their execution is as good as their ideation. We want people with a real vision to get to the top of their industries or start their own enterprises people who are wanting to shape the future rather than look for someone else to tell them what to do. We require people or we look for people who have real multicultural sensitivity. You know, I work in 20 countries each year, face to face, maybe slightly less in this world, but having an understanding of the cultural sensitivities, you know, today is uh, the Eid festival. So it's rather important if you are doing business uh, in the Middle East, for example, that you have an understanding of what people are doing in that period 
and you're you're um, respectful of some of the festivals but also in terms of the consumers what sorts of experiences can you expect during different times in the year and also how do you get stuff done what are the sensitivities that may be not obvious unless you've worked in an international business or context we need people who are passionate and we need people who have some experience this is not just for starters at least three years experience is essential indeed in order to sign for the sign up for this program we'll be looking for you to submit evidence of your work history uh, a resume uh, transcripts from universities explaining what you've done and certain requirements the uh, to efl this is proven proficiency in english uh, if english was not your primary language when you were studying we require that you have uh, evidence that you have a certain standard of business english in order to um, to qualify for the program we are running fast through this busy program we don't want to be spending a lot of time on the basic stuff um, uh, like language, for example, we need to have a certain level of language before we can start. Just before we jump into the Q&A, a few logistics questions here. So in terms of the fee, uh, program fee of 3000 US, um, this can be paid uh, either in a single installment or two equal installments and talk to the program support team about this we require uh, a an application um, fee uh, which is non-refundable obviously there's a lot of admin and processing here the program starts on the fourth and we'll be taking applications right up until the third so if you need a little bit of time on the on uh, lining up the finance you still have some time please as i say if you've got questions do feel free to talk to the program support team uh, if you need any assistance around that. The platform itself, I have to say I've spent uh, many weeks over the last, uh, since this lockdown period, examining different learning platforms. The one we use at Emeritus, I would say, is extremely efficient and very easy to use. And I think that's the key to it. There are some very fancy platforms that do all sorts of stuff. We need something which is easy for you to access on any device uh, which allows you in a very logical way to um, identify where you are in the program and set up your own uh, dashboard uh, profile uh, and we will be populating the dashboard with the relevant modules as you go through the nine month program so there'll be the modules we'll be giving you uh, access to uh, all the other profiles of others on, on the program, your grades as we go through the program, discussion boards for you to be posting and commenting on other people's uh, submissions. We'll be looking at um, calendars, making sure calendars are aligned and you get reminders for certain events during the program. We'll be doing quizzes, we'll be sharing files, uh, and we will be um, providing other collaboration tools. So I'm not going to walk through the platform, but I would say after four years of using this, uh, it's no more complicated than it needs to be. It's very quick and it's very easy and it's accessible also on a mobile device um, for those out and about. You will get a certificate at the end of the program if you get the requisite number of points. And um, this, is, this is significant for many reasons. I mean, I think there's a lot of personal satisfaction you get in achieving a certificate but it's also very important in order to share your uh, proven ability to, uh, to do the nine month program, uh, which of course you can put on your LinkedIn profile or on your resume and proves to be a rather important way of progressing in your career. So we are now 45 minutes into the program um, and I would like to ask if we've got any questions. So, I'm going to just jump into the multi view screen here so I can see all the participants and ask if we've got any questions. If you want to raise your hand now, um, we will unmute you 
so you can uh, you can ask your question and we will do our very best to answer your question now so we've got uh, i see pavan here so pavan over to you we're um, we're keen to see how we can help you pavan what's your question yeah hi Rob. Uh, thanks for the description uh, because so my question is, uh, you know, given the COVID uh, right now, we see a lot of companies, uh, especially in the B2B space, uh, wanting to have an e-commerce strategy. So I want to know if the course covers anything along, uh, you know, how do companies develop an e-commerce strategy or do we have any case studies of companies? How do they, you know, go about establishing an e-commerce presence? Um, yes. So... Uh, and as I said at the beginning, the, the goal here is to assist in re-engineering your business model. And if that requires replacing face-to-face -face sales with um, online sales, that requires provisioning an e-commerce uh, platform or developing your own uh, commerce solution, which may involve uh, distributing your content on a third party um, e commerce platform. No surprises in seeing the vast number of businesses which have um, made their product available on um, cloud based uh, e commerce platform. Take uh, Amazon, for example, take uh, Etsy, take Depop, there are a number of different platforms available uh, for different sectors and understanding how the platform model works. And then for your capstone assignment, I would suggest, uh, Pavan, looking at developing e-commerce functionality would look like a very uh, valuable uh, uh, learning and a very valuable endeavor. But certainly in the interim six months, you will be looking at uh, e-commerce as a core part of the platform ecosystem. Does that, does that help you, Pavan? Any, if you want to come back on that, please feel free. Um, any other questions? Would anyone else like to raise a question? And I'm keen to get some voices here. I can, of course, jump into the, jump into the uh, chat in a moment, but we've got one here from uh, who we got, um, uh, Ola Sagun uh, Sahid. So uh, over to you, if I can uh, ask you to ask your question, please. Ola Sagun Sahid, over to you. Good afternoon. I hope you Good can afternoon. hear me. Yes, loud yes, and clear. Ma yeah, my question is this. What are the, the requirements that qualify me to run the PGD program? That is one. What are the qualifications that you need? For me to secure the admission for the postgraduate uh, diploma program. Yeah, okay, so let me just go back because we did, uh, we did uh, call this out. So can you see the screen there? Yes. Yeah, so those are, your, those are the personal characteristics we're looking for. Uh, in terms okay. of what we're actually requiring, that's, that's what we're looking for there. So minimum of three years professional experience, um, okay. evidence of uh, university qualification, and okay. if, if English is not first language, then a TOEFL yes. and an IET, IELTS score of 550 and six respectively. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, it is. Okay, so, so thanks for your question, and I hope if you've got those qualifications, then uh, we'll be seeing you on the program. So um, anyone yeah. else, any other questions? I see a hand raise here from, um, I don't see the full name, uh, A. Abu Ali. So you're good to speak, uh, M. Abu Ali. Yes, sir, how are you? Yes, good, uh, thank you, good to ha have you with us. Uh, do you think this course can be useful for automation or electrical engineer? For an electrical engineer? Um, yeah. I, I think this course could be valuable for anyone in any business. Uh, if you're looking to uh, develop the, a digital version of your business, uh, which does not require purely face-to-face -face interaction. 
Now, who are your clients and who are your, <clears throat> who are your suppliers, can I ask? Where do you sit in the value chain? Uh, I am a automation engineer. Uh, so I'm working with uh, SCADA systems or uh, uh, distribution control system. So I have all this information about an industry. Uh, so I am looking uh, to uh, working and uh, put myself in uh, DT. So how this can be uh, useful for us? Well, um, so if, if there are um, if there are ways that you can be I expanding your client base by making your services available uh, to a large number of users through a, a, a platform, an, an, inter uh, an intermediary platform where your services could be provided and your potential customer could find you on a third party intermediary platform. Absolutely. I mean, we see if I can use another example, which is not identical, but relevant. We see a number of tradespeople, in other words, providing uh, building supply services, for example, people who may be builders or plumbers or carpenters or, or electricians instead of having to drive traffic to their own website, they are registering on a tradespeople website and the tradespeople website gives them access to a vast number of customers who would never find them on their own website. So building a presence on a third party website is a very powerful way of extending the reach of your business to new customers and providing a business model which doesn't require you to do a lot of the business development because that business development is being done by the platform. Does that help you? Okay, so many thanks. Sir. Okay, so you're, you're welcome. So let's see uh, other questions. I'm seeing uh, Ezra. So Ezra, you're good to speak, please. Ezra, can you, uh, Ezra, are you, uh, are you good to talk? Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks. Um, thanks, um, for the, um, session. Um, it's been quite, um, informative. Uh, my question focuses on, um, I want to find out if, um, this diploma, um, f um, has any module that specifically focuses on digital entrepreneurship. D digital entrepreneurship. Uh, yes, please. Um, well, I, I would say that any, any entrepreneur or any business that is seeking to be itself more entrepreneurial, more agile, to rethink its business and its business model, anyone wanting to achieve those goals should definitely consider this course because we're looking at the principles of building a digital strategy which will allow you to be more competitive and to be more innovative in the products and services you're developing. Now, entrepreneurship means being quicker than your competitive, your competitors, being more innovative than your competitors, and reducing costs and simplifying processes better than your competitors. We tackle all of these topics on this program. So while it's not called digital entrepreneurship, I think you can see that some of the principles we've been discussing here are extremely relevant to achieving those goals. And so I would have no problem if I was looking to, uh, as if I was funding, and I was looking to fund an entrepreneur who came up with a great idea and I'd seen they'd been on this program and they had applied some of those principles, I think they would be a very high uh, proof, well, they would be a very credible uh, recipient of funding. So I think that's, while it's not called entrepreneurship per, per se, I think some of the principles are absolutely there. So thanks Ezra for the question. I hope that, uh, that, that helps to answer. If I may, we've got quite a few more questions. Um, Alejandro 
Hoyos, uh, if I can ask you please to share with us uh, your question, you're good to talk now, Alejandro. Hello, this is Alejandro from Colombia, South America. Yes, Alejandro, good to hear from you today. How can I help? Okay, uh, well, my, my, my main concern is um, I, I'm, I'm running this de developing of a new platform, which is not, I, I don't consider it as a, as an, as an, as a traditional e-commerce platform, because what my platform, uh, what, what, what idea is trying to do is to uh, connect people from rural areas to, to, to companies uh, out of the, in the city and, uh, and selling them social, environmental, social and environmental services to them as for instance uh, preserving a forest or restoring the land so the people in the city and the, and the, and the companies in the city uh, can have access uh, can rely on access to water for the next three or four decades so i don't consider that as a traditional e-commerce platform so I, I would like to ask you if you consider that uh, I, uh, the, the approach that you have in this program it's uh, it's uh, good for me and for my organization yeah, that's a great question, and thanks for thanks for um, sharing that. Um, so, my 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 short answer is: if you have an a a specific business challenge, um, this course will allow you the time to think through from many different angles how to tackle that problem. Now your specific uh, endeavor which i i passionately support i think this is it, the, you, you, this is one of the most important challenges we face in the next 20 30 40 years is how to be more environmentally sensitive this requires a detailed understanding of uh, your customer and who are your urban customers that you're wanting to engage with and how to engage them now, the digital marketing strategy component and module looks in detail at those five different uh, strategies for accessing, engaging, customizing, if you recall, uh, connecting and then collaborating in order yeah. to make sure we fully leverage their networks so we've got the right content we can use on the right platforms to engage those people. The other fundamental point is that your proposition is not straightforward it's rather nuanced and so if we can understand the sorts of messaging and the sorts of data we need to create about the customer in order to provide more targeted content to the customer then that part of the program is going to be really important to you so because this is not a traditional e-commerce play should not be a reason not to do this course. In other words, the more complex and the more unusual the challenge is, I think you're gonna find the more value there is in this course in giving you information which is, uh, which is uh, most valuable. So if I can now come back to just a few questions in the chat here. Um, so I've got a question from Vaesha Laf, um, Emeritus Programs have fixed start and end dates that ensure learners can stay focused. Yeah, this was a question from program support to you about the, the, the start time. Can I move through the program? Well, that's right. So we've got a fixed time frame that we're working to here. Um, is the course suitable for researchers and lecturers from higher education sector? Um, well, I think as the saying goes, um, Great ideas may have many parents. Um, so much of the most valuable learning is sourced by talking to and reading about other learning content and other learning experiences. So I would say for inspiration, you may well have some great ideas that you can source uh, and then build into your own programs. Of course, I would say be careful with copyright and any copyright uh, um, constraints that may exist. Um, I've got a question from Vijay here, Vijay uh, Watwani. Um, can you touch base on the cultural aspects of bringing digital transformation within an organization? This is a great question, Vijay. Uh, clearly one of the biggest challenges we face in digital 
is taking the ideas which you guys, the change agents, will be learning and bringing it back into the organization. Our <coughs> strong view is that by creating and sharing the frameworks for transformation, which can be so easily uh, understood by you, we can then share examples of how businesses featured have overcome some of those internal barriers to ensure other key stakeholders uh, understand what can be done, number one, and understand how to apply the principles too. So this gets us back to my earlier point about innovation and developing ways of thinking through problems, aligning internal stakeholders, using design thinking principles, for example, which allow us to break down the internal barriers which often hinder change and hinder um, uh, transformation. And the practical examples, VJ, that we show of businesses overcoming internal um, uh, disruption are a very effective way for us to do exactly that. I hope, VJ, that's helpful. Um, so any other questions? in the q a i'm seeing so sudendra uh would like to know more about the network connections after course like conferences and awards and any startup mentorship so uh, sudendra there's there's a very vibrant um uh range of very vibrant community courses that are run and conferences that are run by the emeritus team um, and some in partnership with third parties. So I don't have a list in front of me of all the courses here, but we do have uh, awards that are run annually, and we would be welcoming entrants from alumni who have um, uh, who are wanting to uh, show their grasp of some of these topics in the awards that are run. So what we'll do is we'll be sharing this. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's going to be answered. Program support are going to answer that one for you. Um, oil and gas, I see. Have you had participants from oil and gas industry? Do you think this course is useful? I think it's never been more important, uh, Ananian. Um, we're in an industry where, of course, uh, the environment and environmental issues are absolutely primary, and where you see the oil price where it is right now and the huge numbers of layoffs. This is a fundamental issue. It's absolutely the right time to be thinking how can you disrupt and be more efficient at the end of this uh, crisis than we are at the moment. Um, pharmaceutical, Amr, yes, we do work with, a, I've had a number of pharmaceutical clients come through the program. This is very important because of course, we've got uh, a very serious uh, regulatory issues to factor in here and building regulation and allowing in our business uh, transformation, a role for the regulators to be involved and to have input in the solution is critical. And we have worked with a number of pharmaceutical companies uh, in this program in the past. So, and, and good examples to share of their capstone work, by the way. Um, a recruiter here, is the diploma applicable to the role of a recruiter trying to have more favorable outreach to the target audience? I think yes, because you know, for a recruiter, if you can understand the challenges that business has, um, then you're gonna be much better at understanding what sort of candidates you should be um, identifying who have the skills needed to uh, infill these jobs within the, um, within the business, whatever sector that may be. Uh, Patrice, um, so there will be a waiver for a non-native English speaker who's been working in those countries for the past five years. Patrice, I don't have a detailed answer there, but can I suggest program support take that one on? Um, Ranjan, could you advise guest faculty from the commercial world to share real-time challenges? I mean, I'll just give you an example, Ranjan. So I deliver a guest speaker slot on the uh, digital marketing strategy course around user experience and designing world-class sites and apps. Why do they ask me to do it? Because I've worked with many global businesses designing and building 
websites and apps. I know the problems that these businesses have faced and I know the way that they've overcome these problems. And, you know, without wanting to overstate it, I've written three books about this. So I have detailed understanding of that. And so I'm qualified to deliver that program for social media, for uh, data, for platform. We have other guest speakers who have deep expertise in those areas who share that expertise in live webinars. Um, I hope that was useful to you, Ranja. Now, Martin here, how effective would the program be for someone who's transitioning from corporate and starting out entrepreneurship? I think this is a great question and I would just answer that and we're kind of running out of time now. I'd answer that by saying it's interesting to look at how many people come on these programs who are rather wanting to jump out of what they're doing at the moment, develop the skills in order to be successful in the entrepreneurial world. And by the way, also meet up with like-minded people on the program who they can then bounce ideas off and maybe co-create a new business with. So are there any other critical questions? And perhaps uh, Abishai, if I can look to you now, we've got, uh, well, we're four minutes past the hour, so we've gone over slightly. Are there any questions, uh, Abishai, that you think we should address specifically, or should we be, should we be uh, closing off this introductory call today? Abishai, maybe you can, anything in the chat? Okay, so I think this is good. So thank you all. I wanted to get some live comments and questions as well as um, just look at the comments in the Q&A. And this is a slight, uh, uh, it was a, an early example of how interactivity is so important. And in this online world, we don't want to just be doing one way. It's all, we want to be as interactive as possible. We will be sharing uh, the deck with everyone tomorrow. So please keep your eye out on your email for the deck, which we'll be sharing. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for your time on this program today. Please reach out to program support if you uh, have any specific questions or if I could not have time to answer your specific question. And may I wish you um, a very enjoyable learning journey. I very much hope you'll be signing up for this program. And um, if you wish to get uh, a link to you know, the next introductory webinar, Hector, uh, Program Support can share that with you. In the meantime, good luck with your digital journeys. Good luck with your transformation. I hope you find uh, all the learnings on this program hugely valuable and transformative. And in the meantime, stay very safe and healthy uh, in this, uh, this lockdown period. So thank you for that. And I will sign off at this point. All the best.